All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I'm stuck behind a churchgoer doing four miles an hour. I'm actually, on my way to go and pick up a Suzuki Vitara. What are you doing? I'm actually, on my way to go and pick up a Suzuki Vitara that I bought for just two thousand pounds. It's a 2004 or 2005, so 2,000 pounds might sound like quite a lot of money for that, but it's low mileage and it's automatic. And that always commands a disproportionate premium. I just hope it's nice and not rotten, like that Suzuki Jimny that I bought. The Vitara is a really popular little four-wheel drive. In fact, as luck would have it, there's one behind me right now, in a very flattering shade of here in Aid Beige. I know you can't see this in my rearview mirror, but I guarantee they're members of the National Trust. I just know that on the parcel shelf will be a tartan blanket and a box of tissues. I bought another Vitara the other day actually, a 2009 diesel, and I was really impressed with that. I'm in a rural area and it's winter so I just know they'll sell. This automatic three door has been delivered to my office so I haven't seen it yet, but I've got my fingers and toes crossed. I hope it's nice. If it isn't then I've got a bit of a problem on my hands because I can only advertise so many farm vehicles, can't I? I've already had no takers on the old Jimny. Anyway, let's go and have a look, shall we? Right, well we're here. I can't believe I've paid £2,000 for that. Doesn't look like a £2,000 car. It's silver, which is quite a boring colour. It's got steel wheels, which are very rusty. Two grand. You might think I've lost the plot, but a low mileage petrol automatic Vitara, that's a £4,000 car retail. They just are, as much as it might not look it. Those steel wheels need painting. It's quite low on air in one of the tyres. We've got Colin Appleyard plates for a local Suzuki main dealer. The headlamps need buffing. We've got an AA sticker in the window, which is quite worrying. But then it's, it's a Suzuki, they don't really break, do they? Apart from a bit of rust, they are quite reliable. It looks like it needs a very good clean. More importantly, let's do a vehicle history check. If you go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which is Mike Foxtrot 04 FNL. Perhaps FML would be more appropriate. It just checks database in dozens of countries to make sure it's never been stolen, never had a mileage rollback, never been involved in any accidents. It checks to see if there's any outstanding finance on it, but it also checks the previous MOT history and the ownership changes and all that sort of stuff. It can just stop you buying a complete lemon. And because it checks databases all over the place, not just here in the UK, if it's been involved in an accident in Belgium, for example, it'll tell me. And I can't think of another system that would do that. So if you click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK, you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. Okay, so it's registered here in the UK in March 2004, had its first MOT in February 2007. It's passed every single MOT. Okay, we're at 2014, there are a few advisory items, 2015, 16, 17. How long's the current MOT on it? Uh, you see, this is what I was worried about. 2018, 2019, 2020, seatbelt anchorage prescribed area corroded. Rust, this is what I was worried about. Its last MOT was February this year, so it's due one in the next couple of months, and it's passed, but, oh, oh dear, there are a good few number of advisory items here. Oil leak, but not excessive from gearbox. I feel a bit sick now. Offside front brake hose has slight corrosion. Near side rear shock absorber has slight damage to casing. Could not fully inspect the sills due to sill covers. That's a relief, probably don't exist anymore. Brake master cylinder mount in prescribed areas corroded. Offside anti-roll bar linkage pin or bush is worn. Near side front brake hose has slight corrosion. Coil spring corroded. Offside rear shock absorber has slight external damage. Various corrosion to suspension and underside of vehicle. Terrific. And near side front anti-roll bar linkage pin or bush is slightly worn. This is what I was worried about. On the bright side, it's a one owner car. So if the single owner has maintained it every year, it might have good history. Fingers crossed never been stolen, and the mileage is very low. The last MOT, it had only done 48,000 miles. So the previous owner of this has only done two or 3,000 miles a year. It's a Grand Vitara SE, automatic. And this car vertical check also shows you what to look out for. So beware of head gasket failure. Check all the fluids under the bonnet. Check the color of the exhaust smoke. Check the brake pads and discs. Check for rust, check for repair. It's quite handy if you don't know much about cars. Right. Let's go and have a look, shall we? Well, the first good sign is that we've got two keys and two aftermarket fobs, and remember those? It's like in a 90s Japanese car, an old immobilizer. Let's go and have a look then. We 
We've got the steel wheels and they are quite rusty, but a dusting over of some silver paint and they would look better. The tyres look a bit, a bit worn. There's about four mil of tread left, but they don't look very new. Let's see if I can see the date. Not done this for a while. Made in Indonesia. Sorry for this riveting viewing, guys. I'm just trying to find the date stamp, which I can't see anywhere. Where is it? No, that was a waste of time. Body works quite good. A couple of little touch-ins there on the wheel arch. Some more touch-ins here. Wants a good old clean and buff, really. It's missing its aerial, is it? Or, I don't know. Oh, look at this. Harry Potter's one. Hmm, a little bit of surface rust there. We've got another axillary there on the front, which again looks quite old. What's a set of tyres, this? What have I bought here? Headlamps need a good buff. Original Cullen Appleyard plates. We've got another matching axillary here on about three mil of tread. Yeah. According to this badge, it's a Grand Itara. It's lost its V. Oh, what have we got here? Cheshire Polo Club member. la -de da uh, And we've got a Sunny on this side. It was very nearly a full set, wasn't it? Three out of four tyres then. We've got a Bridgestone on the spare. Colin Appleyard sticker there, and on the plate, and there. It's like a rolling billboard for Colin Appleyard. Just noticed we're missing a parcel shelf. Or maybe, maybe it didn't have one actually. Boot looks a bit dirty. Bit of corrosion there on the spare wheel bracket. I mean, Frey, what year is that? That's an 04, 18 years old, is it? 18 year old car, it's not bad, is it? Just wish I didn't have £2,000 tied up in it. For done with these keys now. Oh, we're in. Bit of mould here. Moss. Needs a good clean. More Colin Appleyard advertising. Dear old Colin, a bit of rest. Seat belt, which doesn't want to retract. Quite grubby seats. It's all quite grubby, actually. But it does look very genuine. That is the big selling point here on this. The fact it's automatic. Let's fire this girl up, get some heating on. Have we got any warning lights? Hello. We probably don't have any warning lights, to be fair. Because it's Japanese. Oh, we've got a flashing airbag light. Why is that flashing? Oh, it's gone off. Quarter tank of fuel. Turn that to hot. Very good. What was the radio station? What are they listening to? How do we turn this on? Oh, we can't. First fault then. The radio's broken. That could just be a fuse because it's completely dead. In here we've got nothing, but then we've got lots of receipts and stuff here. Well, it's a one owner car, this. Let's, ah, right, we've got a bit of history here, guys. It's good news. It was first serviced in 2005. That's weird. That must be 06, mustn't it? We've got the dates wrong. 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 2010, where it had a new timing belt. Are they due every five or six years? Should be on its third by now then, shouldn't it? Uh, 2000... Oh, that was serviced in the year 211 AD. 27,000, then 2012. 14, 15, 16, 17. So that was the last service then at 17. Are there any more? Well, it's got full Suzuki history this to 17. So my guess is the MOT would have been done there as well. Look at all this paperwork. Reams of it. Reams. Let's move the camera away before I reveal the previous owner's address. Ah! Right, I 
I think then they've just run out of space in the book because there's another receipt here from 2022. They had a service and an MOT. And another one the year before. There is lots of history with this then. Oh, I've got the original. Can I show you this or not? You'll never believe this. I found the original order form for this car. This was sold in 2004 for 10995 What great value. 10995 Right, enough of that because it's all plastered with the previous owner's name and address. So I shan't show you that. It was sold from new by a very good salesman who tricked him into buying the Super Guard. They use this on the International Space Station, you know. Do they? Very good. We've got an overdrive button. It's never been smoked in. We've got two cup holders here. We've got a... Hmm. I'm a sucker for a... Close it. I'm a sucker for a hidden compartment, a secret drawer or something, but what is the point of that? What are you going to put in that? Pointless. The heat is getting nice and warm. That's good. The windows will work because it's Japanese. And they do. The back looks like it's never been sat in. We've got two cup holders there. Very good. I like a three-door four-wheel drive. 49,000 miles on the clock. Let's have a look under the bonnet then. It'll be my side one because it's Japanese. There we go. We've got here. Another little drawer there. Why? That's like. Why would that be spring-loaded? What's the point of that? Let's see if there's any boot floor. If we rip up this carpet here, I'm expecting to see daylight. Mm, looks all right, actually. Only rust terribly around there. That actually looks okay. In fact, more than okay. Well, I'm back, once a good clean. Oh, look at all the moss and green stuff. That's a very good clean. As do my shoes now. Gross. Right. Well, it doesn't look like there's excessive rust, really. There's a bit of rust down there, but nothing major. Coolant's okay. Again, more rust down there, but it's an 18-year-old car. It's not too bad at all. Had a Halford battery. Various bits of leaks there, but again, oil filter looks fairly new, doesn't it? And it's quite quiet. Day 1.6, I think. I think we'll take this for a drive and see, see how it performs. Handbrake is very good. Three clicks and you're not going anywhere. It, straight away, it feels like a 49,000 mile car, if that makes sense. I can feel all the grain on the steering wheel. Heat is getting nice and warm. Wow, it's cold. Ah, I didn't look under here. Oh. More cup holders, look at that. That's a clever design. And it feels solid as well, not like a VW. Got a spare fob here as well for the alarm. Very good. This is this is like a car design for me. We've got two cup holders there, one more there, that's three. Two in the back plus two under there. Like it's been made for an American. I don't know who's been sat here, but I think they were about four foot. There we go, that's better. Oh, she's pokey. Well, the box feels quite smooth. Into second, into third. It's probably a four-speed auto. 
That tyre needs some air because look at the state of that steering wheel. Oh. Japanese car. What right are the indicator on the other side? Everyone's in a rush. And we're off. Well, the temp gauge is rising nicely. Quarter of a tank of fuel. Doesn't knock over bumps. Engine sounds quite sweet. It's changing gear nicely. That's the thing with these cars. The drivetrain will last forever, but the chassis won't. What should have happened every two years, a Suzuki dealer should have undersealed it, and it might have stood half a chance. But then they wouldn't have a need to buy a new one, would they? I see what's going on here. Turn the heater down there, my face is on fire. Well, I think the biggest test for this Vitara is whether it passes an MOT. So I think, now I know it drives okay, and the history's excellent, that will be my next stop. Take it down for an MOT and see what it needs. I'm not hopeful. There's the black Vitara I was telling you about. See that there? It's a five doer. New shape, which looks so much better than this old shape one. The ride's quite crashy, but then it is a three door car and they always are. Anything with a short wheelbase is a bit choppy. There's really no point in me taking this any further, is there? I had half a feeling it would drive well. It's just whether it needs any welding. I could do with finding out what my MOT tester likes to drink, whether it's whiskey or wine, and then leave a nice bottle of it on the passenger seat. Right, I shall catch up with you in a day or two. Wish me luck. Right, we're back, and once again it's been transformed. I've given this car a new lease of life. If you remember, I was quite worried about this passing its MOT. There were lots of advisory items on the last MOT, so I thought this was going to cost me a small fortune to get it for a fresh one. But, and you might need to sit down for this next one, it didn't. Here's what happened. So I dropped it off at my local MOT place, and a couple of days later, my mechanic called me with some bad news about something else. And she said, oh, by the way, your Vitara's ready. I said, really? Which one? At the time, I had three Vitaras in stock. This 04 model being the oldest. Anyway, she said, uh, the little silver auto one is ready. I said, oh, okay. What did it need? She said, nothing, it was fine. Surely not. I said, did it not need any work? Was there no rust? She said, no, it's fine. There was a little bit of surface rust, but nothing worth advising. We've done the service and the MOT, so it's all ready to pick up. I just couldn't believe my luck. That's been the biggest result of this project because it could have so easily gone the other way. While it was down there, I asked them to remove the radio because if you remember, that wasn't working. Now, originally my plan was just to have a look on eBay and find a replacement, take that one out, screw in the new one, job done. But because they're quite rare cars, there's only one radio available and it was 200 quid. So I thought, I'm not spending another 200 pounds on this car. I need to protect my profit margin. So I got my mechanic to whiz it out and then I dropped it off with my local car audio specialist. I just thought there was a chance he might be able to repair it. Sure enough, three days later, he called me to say, right, it's all ready. I asked him what was wrong with it, which in hindsight was a mistake because it all went over my head. He started talking about circuit boards and soldering and all that sort of stuff. He might as well have been talking about how nuclear submarines work. That sort of thing just really isn't my area of expertise. Anyway, it's all done and working very well. Bit of Shawn Mendes. I always prefer to get something like that fixed anyway. I just hate throwing things away. Then I had the wheels refurbished. Now, if you remember, they're only steel wheels, but they'd gone all rusty and looked a bit of a mess. So my wheelman came out, sanded them all down, primed them and gave them a fresh coat of silver. And it's just really lifted the whole car. It just looks a lot tidier. Then I had the wheel alignment done, which, to be fair, it needs to go back. It used to be slightly right of centre, and now it's drifted way over to the left. It's gone from Telegraph to Guardian. What I need them to do is straighten it up, because it's still a little bit wonky. Anyway, I've paid for that already, so I'm sure they'll do that free of charge. Then the final job, I took it over to Tameside Valentin for a full detailed valet, and I also asked them to buff the headlamps. They'd gone all yellowed and discoloured, but again, they look like new. I mean, keep in mind this is a 19-year-old car now. I think it looks as bright as a button. Right, let me find somewhere scenic to park and I'll talk you through my costs. This weather is terrible. Right, here we'll do. That's the good thing about driving a short wheelbase, four wheel drive. You can go anywhere you like. Right, so where should we start? Now I paid 2000 pounds for this car. The service and MOT cost me 227, which was such a result. I spent 190 on the wheels. The radio repair was 75 pounds, far cheaper than the 200 for a new system. 
it cost me £54 for the wheel alignment, which hasn't been done properly, and the valet and headlamp buff cost me £100. So, my total is, just bear with me a second, my total spend, let's do that first, 75 plus 54 plus 190 plus 100 plus 227. My total spend is £646. Add on top of that the £2,000 for the car. So this car now owes me £2,646. I've currently got this advertised for 3995 so if you take off my cost, that leaves me with a profit of £1,354. That's not the full story though, you've got to take off my VAT margin. The VAT margin is 20% of my gross profit margin, so the difference between £2,000, the purchase price, and £4,000, the asking price. So my VAT margin on that is 20% of two rand, which is all the threes, isn't it? Three, 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 three. So my profit will be, hopefully, 1354 less 333 recurring. £1,021. I'll be quite pleased with that. I recently did a video, a Q&A video, and somebody asked me what was my profit margin on each car. Now, in this job, anyone who does this job will tell you that differs wildly. But in my mind, I like to make a £1,000 profit per car. So with this one, even though I've spent £600 on it, I should be on target to do that. So all is not lost. It's well worth doing. Well, I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you're interested in getting into the used car business, then check out my online course. I'll leave the link to that below. But I've created an online platform with nearly 100 videos which explain every single aspect of the used motor trade. From funding, branding, sourcing cars, repairing cars for sale, it's all there. So do check it out. So yeah, cheers guys. See you later.